Welcome back to Beg Borrow Steel. It's October time now. The boys have just finished another session on the training ground and we've got a big episode today. We're going to update you on our form, show you where we are in the league, assess our finances compared to everybody else in the division, as well as playing another crunch game. So let's begin by looking at our finances. And I thought we'd have a little look at how much we're spending on wages Compared to all of our rivals in the division, you can see that of the top five spenders, four of them are B teams to some of Spain's biggest clubs. And I B through in there spending more than three million pounds a year on wages as well. You've got to scroll down and keep going all the way down to 19th until you find us spending just under a million pounds a year on wages. Our finances at the moment are not looking great. We're £700,000 in debt. We've clawed a little back. It had gone over a million at one stage. Attendances at the new stadium that we're renting have helped with the cash flow a little bit. And it means that we're slowly eking our way back towards being in the positive figures again. That's how the finances are looking. Maybe we should have a look at our form over the first 10 games. So brace yourselves, everybody. It's actually looking rather smart. There's our pre-season form, by the way, which we didn't show you in our last episode, where we didn't concede a goal at all during pre-season. We've kept a fair few clean sheets so far across our opening 10 league games as well. We showed you that 4-1 win on the opening day of the season in our last episode. We backed that up with two draws. One of them was against FC Andorra. We actually could have won this game, and it turns out and Dora are a pretty decent side. So this wasn't a bad result, even though we probably should have taken all three points. Since then, we've been pretty good. The clean sheet started to flow with a 4-0 win, a tight 1-0 win, a more comprehensive 5-0 victory, before solid 3-1 wins, 3-0 wins, a 1-1 draw, when we really should have taken all three points from this game again, because they managed to score with the final kick of the game in a match where, well, we dominated really and we should have been more than one goal up before we got into injury time. But we bounced back in our last game though. Yaya Sonogo banged in a first half hat trick. We showed precious little after the break, if I'm honest, but it was a very good performance and Yaya was looking imperious. It took him a bit of time to get going this season. And now that he's up and running, he's in pretty decent form. Let's show you how that's leaving the league table looking at the moment. And pretty decent viewing, if I'm honest. We've got a game in hand on Andorra. They've already played earlier today. They won 1-0, a late goal. to put them four points clear at the top of the table. And remember, only the top team is getting out of this division automatically. So the team's second down to fifth. The playoffs await. But if we were to win today, it would lift us to being just a point behind Andorra after 11 games. And if you'd have offered us that at the start of the season, we would have bitten the proverbial hand off. Maybe we should show you how the tactics looking, the team that we're going to be putting out today, and how thin our squad is. So we're still pootling along with our 4 4 2. I knew if I played football manager for enough years, the 4 4 2 would come back into fashion. And so it's proved our squad is pretty stretched, though. We can't make the full 12 substitutes that you need at this level. Oh, our old mate Carrasco, by the way, cannot get himself fit. Every time he's back on the bench, he picks up another knock in training. We've not really seen him at all so far this season. And of the players on our bench, well, a fair old few of them are youngsters that have come through our own academy, Gerard Lopez is now our backup goalie, developing pretty nicely as well, by the way. We've got other players on the bench like Eduardo, good personality, training, okay, although still got some big gaps in his game. Carlos is going to be on the get on the bench today for us. Not the best at training. We're trying to tutor his personality to see whether that can improve things. We've also got another one of our youngsters on the bench, Eduardo Inglesias, another one who's a little bit mixed in training. I don't think we've had the best of our youth players come through yet. You really need those professional personalities to get the ones that really train well. But it means we're a little bit thin on the bench, especially 
when it comes to midfield and defensive options going forward, we've got a little bit more depth, but defensively, we're a bit more stretched. We've got Jake O'Brien, who's proved a decent backup so far, and he's even made a few starts. And we've got an Englishman in the form of Niall Mason, who can fill in across the back four and in midfield. But we'd like one or two more in the January window. We're playing very well, though. This guy, Zoolander, has been superb again at this higher level. Six assists so far. Four goals for him. He's been an absolute star. The Manners has been a rock at the back. He's proven that he's capable of playing at this level as well. He is rocking up a very decent average, but probably our best player, by the way, alongside Yaya, who took a while to get going, but has now got five goals and three assists, is Kevin Carlos. A goal a game in his 10 appearances so far. He's training very well physically. He's beginning to look imperious at this level. His finishing has improved as well. And he is looking rather good. You'll notice that old Nana is still ticking along there on a month-to-month -month contract. She's playing pretty well, old Nana, despite the amount of criticism I've sent her away. We'll reassess Nana in the January window. Today, we've got a game against Terrassa. They're not having the greatest of seasons. They're currently down there in 18th place in the table. There in the relegation mire, we need a win. Get back in touch with Andorra at the top of the table. And so we're underway. Things have been going so well at the start of this season that I fully expect the game we come back for against a team in the relegation zone is the one where we mess everything up. But it looks like we've made a reasonable start to the game and 15 minutes in, We've got the first highlight. By the way, how big is the ground that Terrassa are playing at? An absolute cauldron. They're on the ball. We've won it back from them. And we've got it to Lander. Lander really has been superb. There's a couple of clubs chasing him. But it's little balls like that where having a left footer out on the right wing means that he can ping those balls over the top. And Kevin Carlos has been a willing recipient of those. So far this season, the corner comes to nothing. Hey, Mickey, you're so fine. He's on the ball. Smitty's there. Ambra Solaire. And it peters out into nothing. We've got an XG. Almost half a goal already just on the back of that Kevin Carlos chance. Here's Nana. She moves slowly these days, but she's a willing little defensive option in midfield for us. And Kevin Carlos, six foot two. And he is... Probably our best performer, along with Zoolander, so far this season. We're getting towards the half an hour mark. Terrassa are looking to play out from the back again. It's not worked for them. Hey, Mickey's there. Lander's there. It's all very narrow. We got it to Gooty. Can Gooty get a ball over? It's gone back. We worked it into the box. Hey, Mickey to Sonogo. To Zoolander. The chances were there. Zoolander had it on his left foot as well. That's his favoured swinger. And he wasn't able to score. The XG is now over one. And we haven't scored yet. We're going to encourage the team. We've done it just as a highlight starts. The ball's gone in. Nana's at the far post. Decided not to challenge with her hips. Probably best that she didn't leap for that one. And we do fear the ball over the top, by the way. We have been caught by that a couple of times. We've had to drop the line late on in games, just to make sure that we're seeing out results. We've managed to pick the ball up again, though. Zoolander crafts it in. Sonogo drops deep. Hey, Mickey's in. To clip the outside of the post. Not so fine on that occasion, but still, we're looking pretty dangerous. The hosts have only had one shot, but the scores are tied. I think it's only fair we ask a little bit more of the players for the second half, because I think this is a game that we should be winning. Okay, we're back underway, having praised Jumanez before the game for his form. He's on a 6.5, so we'll keep an eye on that. And we've raced through the first 15 minutes of this half before we've got to a highlight. Zoolander's on the ball. Looks like it could be another chance for a Smitty. Amber Solaire brings it inside. Sonogo, he loves to drop off and then turn and hit the box. But this time, Kevin Carlos is the one that's in. We've hit the post again, and they've hacked it clear off the line. And how we are not ahead in this game 
is becoming a little bit of a worry and a little bit of a mystery. And we're not going to get caught as well, are we? We're not because the Admiral Lord Nelson gets onto the ball. At 60 minutes, I think we need to make a little tweak, maybe to personnel, but certainly maybe trying to get a little bit more width to our play. OK, 30 minutes to go. Two changes made. Yaya's departed for today. We've also taken Guti off at left back. It's returning from an injury. It means we've brought Niall Mason out there as a right-footed player playing at left back. And we've also asked for a little bit more width from the team and nudged the tempo up as well. Eight minutes after the changes, we've got our first highlight. We've certainly got the more width there. You can see the Solaire is right on the touchline. Domingo's the man that came on for Yaya. Wasn't able to score on that occasion, and we're demanding more of the players. Most have reacted well to that, but they're still not forcing the chances. With 10 minutes to go, I think we need to make another couple of tweaks to try and snag a winner. Okay, 10 minutes to go. We've switched to our wide diamond formation to try and force the breakthrough. We'll probably switch back out of that if we can find a goal. We've got a short corner where Zoolander and Jordi are playing it between themselves, but no luck on that occasion. 20 shots, seven on target, five minutes to go. Nothing's happening for us. We'll try and fire them up into injury time. I think we've got one more chance. We've got a minute to go. This should be a proper highlight. Can we pull one out of the fire? We've deserved this game. We get a nil-nil draw out of this. This is an opportunity missed. And Kevin Carlos blasts one towards goal. And I think that's going to be our last chance. We've got 25 seconds left. They're not in any rush. They're going to play out from the back. You can see how many players we've got in advanced positions. And I think Terrassa are going to be happy with a point. They've gone long. We can't win the ball back from them. If they, oh, if they snake us at the death, this is going to be a travesty. They're offside. You can see how. Our higher line can get caught, and we're over the allotted added time. And I think that could be all for us. We're not playing with enough urgency either. The Human League passes it into midfield. It's petered out into a nil-nil draw. How have we not got all three points from that game? The hosts didn't even register a shot on target. I'm pretty disappointed with that. I'm embarrassed. I'm really not. How? I'm not sure. I'm embarrassed, but. I'm really not happy Zoolander doesn't like the tough love. But it really wasn't a good enough performance in front of goal, all of which leaves us three points behind Andorra. We've now slipped a point behind Ibiza as well. We need to get going and play some more games. Will we still be in playoff contention when you come back? Will we have slid down the table? Or will we have been able to make it to the summit? Find out when we come back for Friday's episode of Beg, Borrow and Steal.